What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and more Dead Man's Hand. Today we're going to take a look at the Notorious Mountain Men, which introduces a couple new things for the uh, for the game, and it's an interesting faction to boot. It is one of the sort of latter factions if you're kind of going from the core set to the various expansion books. So, with these guys, we have to have a boss as normal. So, and he will have a pistol and knife. As you can tell, just about everything in here will have a pistol and knife. Um, if you want to go that route, but pretty typical stuff there, although this faction, he does get a plus one to hand-to-hand -hand built in. The Bear Man also is our standard guy, but uh, no extra hand-to-hand -hand bonus for him, although he does have the pistol and the knife. And then we'd have to have two or more free trappers. So here you can go pistol and knife, repeater, rifle, or musket, although up to one could have the buffalo gun, and you might as well just take it because... Um, it is the longest range and hardest hitting gun that you have access to, period, across the factions. So, and then that being said, for one point apiece, and it's kind of fun if you want to go this route, you can have up to four company men. Um, they, uh, ironically or interestingly enough, don't have that minus one to shoot built in, although they still have the minus one to hand to hand that a lot of the weaker guys do, the, the, the one point guys, which is interesting in a faction that is really geared towards a lot of close combat, but... Um, no penalty on the musket, and these are just one rep apiece, so not going to be blazing away with shots per turn here, but it is just kind of cool that you can have a lot of cheap, really long-range firepower that actually hits really hard. So the musket we've seen before, right, one shot per turn, and you're always out of ammo after firing, of course. Any hit from a musket that does not automatically kill someone automatically will be the under fire marker and then a nerve test as, as an option. So really makes each shot hurt a lot more and you can see the ranges there. Moving on, the Buffalo rifle is uh, basically the same thing except um, it has a much longer range as you can see from there. And uh, interestingly enough as well, you only get one shot per turn, but you're not out of ammo. So it does pay, it does give you a little bit more maneuverability with that particular weapon. And you might as well take that one action, but most of the time too, to, to get that aim in there as well. So the mountain men also have three special rules, which is pretty damn cool. So lay of the land, always get the initiative if there's a draw. So seems situational and certainly is in one regard, but on the other hand, every draw just means you're, you're going to get to go first. And that does have uh, some power. Um, knowing that you'll have that when that comes up. So then they have Suit of Stiffened Skin, which is pretty damn powerful. So uh, this is for all of them, but basically if they um, lose in hand-to-hand, -hand, they take one less damage, uh, which in a lot of cases could result in them taking no damage. So that can be pretty damn demoralizing if, you know, your opponent's winning some hand-to-hand -hand stuff, but, you know, you really mitigate the damage and... The longer they stay in hand-to-hand -hand with you, a lot of times the worse that is. Because we get to the last ability here. Mountain men armed with a pistol and knife can re-roll their own hand-to-hand -hand scores if they wish. The second result applies. So obviously if you've rolled like crap, you want to take a chance and get a higher one, right? Um, I mean, if you're already losing, great. But, you know, it's it's like, you know, if you roll like a one or two or something, sure, we're going to take a re-roll, right? So three pretty cool abilities. So by and large, they're pretty nasty in combat for those who, certainly who have the pistol and knife, but they all have a little bit of defense and then just that blanket initiative buff there if you happen to draw. So they don't have the normal card description in here, but I'm assuming what it is is what we get down here in the experience table. So we have our Jack, uh, Jack Queen, King, and Ace as normal. So the first ability here, we'll ignore the reputation stuff, but um, the, 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 the the cards here, the abilities are pretty cool nonetheless, um, if not necessarily as powerful as some of the other factions. But they're, they're still relevant, right? And it's really a lot of times also just about synergy of what's going on in your list. The jack is called Quick Hands, so you don't need to reload a musket after firing, but you can still only fire one shot per turn. But hey, that frees you up again for a little bit of mobility, and you, know, you can set yourself up in a pretty spot for next turn, or you can you know, duck back if you don't want to burn an activation for... Um, for that turn, you know, if you haven't, uh, actually, actually we, we can't really duck back, but um, you can get out of the way for any return shots for the rest of the turn. That way you're not burning a duck back, um, potentially, later on. Um, it kind of makes sense. So, not that great, but it is still pretty neat. So, one less, it's, it's, it's all about economy of action, really. So, not having to reload is pretty cool. Would be interesting um, 
if any of the other factions that had the musket would also get something like that. But, oh well. Move Like the Wind is honestly probably the scary one here. You can use one move action to move straight into hand-to-hand. -hand. Um, so, this, you know, again, we don't want the, you don't want to get stuck in combat with these guys with their, their combat abilities. And then this just lets them get into combat a little bit faster. So especially if the boss, the main man, gets in there um, with his built-in plus one, that's going to be scary. One with nature can use two recover actions to remove three markers. So if you're getting close to being just about dead, obviously if you have three markers and you're one of the low-level guys, you're dead anyway. But this is just nice for healing up the, the, the more important of your characters and really can help reset the clock on that and erase a lot of progress that the um, opponent may have made, especially if something goes wrong. Crack shot for the ace. It's a plus one bonus to shoot attribute with any weapon or draw from the legend of Dead Man's Hand table. Um, so really the way I would treat this then is just, you know, you get a plus one bonus to your shoot for that particular shoot action is is the most fair way to do that again some of these ladder crews as they get in here it's, it's not as cut and dry as some of the the more known ones that we've been reviewing here but that's how i would make them work but still again nothing insanely overpowering or just, just kind of like you know like definitely altering this the the flow of the game like we've seen some of the factions here but these are just more smaller little buffs that really play towards some of the things that this faction does and needs right so not, not not having to reload muskets if you're loading heavy on muskets is a cool thing. Being able to get into combat easier uh, with an extra move is always cool. And then uh, that uh, healing ability is rather unique. We haven't seen anything like that yet. So, you know, instead of having to, you know, it does have the requirement that you have to remove three markers. So, but having to only spend two there instead of essentially having to burn a whole turn is pretty cool. It does let you maybe do a little bit of something um, with that final action that you have. So, and then crack shot is... Uh, again, pretty nice too. Just a, just a straight up buff. Sometimes that extra plus one really does matter. So, um, especially you know if you can aim with the musket and get another plus one, that's pretty nasty too. Or stack up even more buffs on like your pistols and things like that. So lots of cool things. But it's a fun faction, especially from the looks of them, right? So or these rough and ragged guys here. So it should be a pretty fun list depending on how you want to kit it out. Now the box I will say that it comes in is primarily, um, as you can see, four of the guys are carrying long range weapons so you got some muskets and the buffalo gun whichever you want to designate as that so it doesn't really lend itself if you wanted to go mainly pistols with these guys you could get some additional figures that look like them and then really just build up on pistols and not take any of the the cheap company men so that'd be a pretty nasty list too very much short range but geared towards getting into combat you have your defensive buff and your offensive buff as well so really good stuff, especially again, going the pistol and knife combo. So that is a brief overview of the Mountain Men. We're looking forward to they're actually next up in the painting queue here. So we're kind of keeping track here, trying to get one crew per quarter finished. So this is our quarter three um, group that we're working on. So let us know what you think in the comments, guys. Have you played the Mountain Men or against them? What are your thoughts? Um, hit us up in the comments, like, comment, subscribe, and we'll have more Dead Man's Hands soon. Take care.